Okay, let's go through the solutions to the assessment one revision sheet. Okay, so first question, estimate the value of the following problem. Now, this is a super important word whenever you see it in a maths problem because it can save you an awful lot of time. Uh, it can be in very wordy problems or it could be in quite short problems like this. But if you see that word, that tells you that everything is going to get rounded, okay? And we're going to focus on the first significant figure of each number in our problem. And that's going to tell us how we're going to round each number, okay? So the first number, 6.8. 6.8, we're going to round where the 6 is. So 6 is in the 1s column, but that's the same as rounding to the nearest integer, the nearest whole number. So 6.8, we're going to round it to 7. 40.1. Well, 4 is in the tens column, so we're going to round that to the nearest 10, so that's going to become 40. And in 19, the 1 is also in the tens column, we're going to round 19 to the nearest 10, so we're going to round that to 20. This little symbol I used in the middle is the approximately equal to sign, so I've used that because we've changed all the numbers to something quite close. Now we still need to work out an answer, but the numbers are much nicer to work with. So let's look at the top. 7 times 40. Well, 7 times 4 is 28. Because of the 0 after 40, I'm going to write a 0 at the end of 28. So 7 times 40 would be 280. Now I need to divide that by 20. So 280 divided by 20, you can go through the 20 times table if you like. Wait until you get to 280. And if you do that, whatever method you use, you will arrive at an answer of 14. So 14 is the correct estimate to the original problem. Question 2a, express 108 as a product of prime factors. So this phrase tells us that we're going to be using something called a factor tree to break down 108. So I'm going to Take a pair of numbers that times together to make 108. And when you're dealing with big numbers such as this, that are a little bit awkward, if it ends in an even number, so that 8 is an even number, uh, that tells us that it's divisible by 2. So I'm going to split into 2 times something. And if I halve 108, that will give me 54. So 2 times 54 gives me 108. I'm going to circle the prime number 2. And I'm now going to break down a 54 ends in an even number again, so I now can divide that by 2 again. So I'm going to do 2 times, and this is a bit tricky, how many 2's going to 54? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a quick bus stop to one side, just to check how many 2's going to 54. 2 goes into 5 twice, with 1 left over, and 2 goes into 14 7 times, so I know that 2 times 27 makes 54. So I'm going to put a 27 here. 2 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. 27 isn't prime, um, and it also isn't an even number. It doesn't end in an even number. And So if you check your times tables, you should find that it's in the 3 times table. And indeed, 3 times 9 equals 27. 3 is prime, I'm going to circle it. 9 we can break down, though, into 3 times 3. So 3 times 3, both of those are prime. And so I am done with my tree. So everything I've circled now, I'm going to write as a product. And product means multiplication. So I'm going to write all these numbers, and I'm going to keep them in order as well, as one long multiplication. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. And that is my product of prime factors, because if I worked it out on a calculator, I would arrive at my original number of 108. But this part here. This is the answer that we are looking for. If I wanted to tidy it up a little bit, I could, not by working it out, but just collecting the numbers. So 2 times 2 is the same as 2 squared. Uh, 3 times 3 times 3 is the same as 3 cubed. So I could write it as 2 squared times 3 cubed. Okay, the next question. Find the highest common factor of 108 and 24. Now to do this, we're actually going to use our previous answer so 108, we know, was made using 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. I'm now going to do the same thing with 24, 
and right 24 is a product of prime factors. So I'm just going to come to the side and go over here. Break 24 down. I'm going to use a 3 times 8, making 24. I'm going to circle the 3 because that's prime. 8 I'm going to break down into 2 times 4. 2 is prime. I'm going to circle it. And then 4 broken down is 2 times 2. And they're both prime, so I'm going to circle those. Now I'm going to write 24 underneath 108 and write down the product of prime factors for 24. So that's 2 times 2 times 2 and then times 3. Okay, the method now is to put our information into a Venn diagram. So a couple of circles, one circle is representing 108, one circle is representing 24. First thing we're going to do is look at which numbers go into the overlap. Now in the overlap, we're going to have numbers that appear in both lists. So I have a 2 that appears in both lists. So I'm going to cross over 2 from both lists and write a single 2 in the middle. Uh, I'm going to cross over another 2 from both lists, put another 2 in the middle. There's another 2 in both lists, which I'll cross out. So I'll put that in the middle. And finally, there's a three in both lists. So I'm going to cross out a three and put that in the middle. I've got one three left over, and that's in the 108 list. So I'm going to put that last three into the 108 circle. Not in the overlap, though, because it's not in the 24 list. I've got nothing else of 24. So this is my complete diagram. So my highest common factor is equal to everything in the overlap multiplied together. So I've got 2, 2, 2, and I've got a 3. So those four numbers times together would give us our highest common factor. If I wanted what we call the lowest common multiple, the smallest multiple that 108 and 24 go into, I would times everything in the overlap, and I would also times the 3, so everything in the diagram. So everything in the diagram would just be all those numbers that we had in our two circles. Uh, but I'm not interested in that. That's just how I work out the lowest common multiple. I want the highest common factor, so I've got to work out 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 is the highest common factor, which is the biggest factor that goes into both 24 and 108. Moving on to question 3. So some algebra. So simplify. So I need to tidy up what I've got here in the first part. So I've got T's and I've got G's. So I can collect the T's together. So I've got a 3T and I've got a plus 3T there. So collect those. That will give us a 6T. I then got a plus 5G. So that's positive. But then I have to take away 2G from that. So 5G take away 2G is 3G. And that's a positive 3G, so I'm going to put a plus before it. So that's 6T plus 3G. Next part, 2R times 5P. So this is a multiplication. So 2 times 5 would give us 10. And then R times P, we just put the two letters side by side, which is RP. We could also put the letters the other way around, so I could put 10 PR. So either of those two answers would be fine. Part B, expand the brackets. So the word expand means multiply out the brackets. And the 5 on the outside wants to times everything inside the brackets. So I'm going to do a little multiplication grid. I'm going to put the 5 on the left because that's what's on the outside of the brackets. And the two things inside my brackets are 2y and negative 3, the negative belonging to the so I'm going to work out two parts to my answer. 5 times 2y is 10y. And 5 times minus 3 is minus 15. So my final answer, I've got it in my grid, is 10y minus 15. Part C, expand and simplify, we've got double brackets. So for double brackets, I'm going to do a larger multiplication grid. And I'm going to split it in two rows and columns like so. And on the left hand side, I'm going to put the two things inside my first bracket, which are x 
and positive 3. There is a plus in front of the 3, um, which just means that it's a regular positive 3. If there's a subtract in front of the 3, I'd have to make sure the minus goes with the 3. Uh, on the top, we're going to put the other brackets, the contents of the bracket, which are x and positive 6. And now I'm going to work out all my multiplication separately. So I'm going to have x times x, which is x squared, x times 6, which is 6x, x times 3, which is 3x, and 3 times 6, which is 18. The final step is to collect everything together. So I'm going to write everything that I've got as one big sum. So I've got x squared plus 6x plus 3x plus 18. And there's two things that can be collected here, which are the 6x and the 3x. So my final answer is going to be x squared plus 9x, which I get from the collecting, and then plus 18 at the end. And that is the final answer to part C. OK, moving on to some averages and range now. So this question wants us to find the mean, median and range for the following numbers. So let's start with the mean. So to find the mean, we need the total divided by how many there are. So for our total, I need to add up all the numbers together. And if we just work them out very carefully, so 2 plus 7 is 9, add 4 is 13, add 8 is 21, add 4 is 25, and then add 5 is 30. So the total is 30. My next step is to then divide 30 by how many numbers there are. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers. So we need to do 30 divided by 6, and that gives us a mean of 5. So that is our mean. OK, second thing we need to work out is the median. Now, to find the median, we need to put our numbers in order first. I can either go smallest to largest or largest to smallest, your choice. So we have a 2 as our smallest number. Then we have a couple of 4s, then a 5, then a 7, then an 8. So now we need to find the middle of those numbers. So you can cross numbers out from either side if you like, but eventually what you'll find is actually the middle is somewhere between 4 and 5. So we have to go dead centre between 4 and 5 to find our centre, and dead centre of those two is an answer of 4.5, and that is our median, 4.5. The last thing we need to work out, the third thing we need to work out, is our range. Now, to find our range, that is the highest take away the lowest. So our highest number is 8 in the list. Our lowest number is 2. So our range is going to be an answer of 6. OK, question 5. So we have a table of data here, and we've got groups. Um, so these groups tell us the weights in kilograms of 100 pigs. So for example, in the first row, what this means is that there are four pigs that have a weight of between 65 and 70. The next row, there are 10 pigs with a weight of between 70 and 75, and so on and so forth. Now question A says write down what's called the modal class interval. Now a fancy term, but let's just focus on that word modal. That looks very similar to the word mode reason for that because actually it is the mode but it's a mode specifically to grouped data so we need to find the group which represents the mode in other words the group which is the most popular is the most popular data has the most data within it and looking through all our groups if you consider the frequency of the groups so the most number of picks um that would be 34 so 34 pigs in this group of 75 to 80. So that is the most popular group. So my answer is going to be, and I'm going to write down how it's written in the table, my group between 75 and 80. So that is what we call our modal class. Part B, calculate an estimate for the mean. Now what I'm going to do is first I'm just going to about a few bits so they don't get in the way. Okay, so 
an estimate for the mean. So we need to find a mean from grouped data. So I'm just going to go the, through the routine for this. The first thing we need to do is to write down the midpoints of our groups, so the halfway values of our groups. Now, halfway between 65 and 70, a bit of a tricky one, that is 67.5. Halfway between 70 and 75 is 72.5. Then we're going to have 77.5, 82.5, 87.5, and finally 92.5. So these are all the halfway values with each of our groups. We're then going to times these halfway values by the numbers in the frequency column. So we're going to have 67.5 times 4, 72.5 times 10. And so I've got my cloud next to me, so I'm going to work my way down as I go. So we'll have got 67.5 times 4. So that gives us an answer of 270. Uh, the next one, we have 72.5 times 10. Well, times in 10 is quite nice. I just shift all the digits along, so that's 725. I've then got 77.5 which I need to times by 34. And that gives me a big number of 2,635. I've then got 82.5 times 32. And that gives a number of 2,640. We've then got 87.5 times 16, which is a total of 1,400. And finally, 92.5 times 4, which is 370. Okay, so those are all my totals. So I need a grand total for all of those. So mean is about total divided by how many pieces of data. So all my totals need to be added up. I'm going to pull those into my calculator now and just double check, make sure I don't make a mistake when I type them in. 725 and 270 and I get an answer of 8040. The next thing we need to do is to add up our frequency column. So this is how many pigs there were in total. Now I could put all those into my calculator but actually my question tells me how many pigs there were which was 100. So I should find when I add them up I get an answer of 100. So final thing to do is to take our grand total and divide by our total frequency, which was 100. And once again, I don't actually need to use calculator for this bit, but it's always worth double checking just in case. When you divide by 100, all it means is your number, your original number, moves two places to the right. So I'm going to get an answer of 80.4 or 80.40. And that is my estimated mean. Okay, next question. I've got two numbers here, x equals minus 4 and y equals 5. I need to work out the value of 3x plus 2y. So this is going to be a substitution question. So 3x means 3 times x. But instead of x, we've got minus 4. So I'm going to substitute in minus 4. I've then got plus and then 2y, which is 2 times y. I'm going to replace y with 5. 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. 2 times 5 is 10. So I've now got minus 12 and 10. Just be very careful which way along the number line you go. So minus 12 in the negatives. I need to move up 10 spaces towards the positives. You end up with a final answer of minus 2. Final question. Six students took a test. Their scores were out of 20. So the lowest score was 13 marks. The range was 7, the mode was 16, and the median was 18. Write down the scores of the six students. So I've got six gaps here. I need to work out what the six scores were. And well, the first one I can write in is the lowest score, which is 13. So I'm going to have these in order. I'm going to put 13 there. That is my lowest number. So it's going to go in that spot. So I shouldn't have any numbers lower than 13 now. The range of the scores is 7. And remember, the range is highest take away lowest. Now, I don't know what the highest number is. But I do know that the lowest is 13. 
And if I want the range to be 7, it should allow me to work out what the highest number is going to be. So the only number I could take 13 away from to get 7 is 20. So my highest number in the list has got to be 20. So I've now achieved that one. Right then, next, the mode is 16. So that means the most common number in this list has got to be 16. So I need to have at least two 16s in the list, but then there could be three 16s, there could be four 16s. I don't know how many there are going to be. So I'm not quite sure on this one just yet. I just know there's going to be at least two 16s. This next one, however, this next bullet point should help me quite a bit. The median has got to be 18 marks. So if my median is 18, now I've got six gaps here, well, six numbers in my list, and my median is going to be right in the middle between the third and the fourth number. And I'm told that in that gap, I need a value of 18. So if 18 is going to go in that gap there, the only way I can have 16s in this list are if 16 is to the left of that gap. So I could have a 16 in this gap and I can have a 16 in this gap. But if I want my median to be 18, 18 has got to be halfway between 16 and the next number up. And the only way in which 18 can be halfway between 16 and the next number is if the next number is 20. But if my next number's 20 and all my numbers are in order, then that means that this number here has also got to be 20. Now, this is a big problem because obviously my mode has got to be 16 marks. But at the minute, it looks like my mode is 20 marks. And you would be absolutely spot on because sadly, when I made this homework, I made a big mistake in the clues that I gave you for question seven because it all breaks down. What I should have done was changed this third bullet point and said the mode was going to be 20. But because I didn't, it meant that we ended up with an error in our calculations. But that is completely my fault. If you work through this and realize there was a mistake here, very well done. Um, unfortunately, we can't do any better than that. But that concludes the answers to this homework.